I mean, I think it's pretty obvious right now that Nevada has become a factory for producing positive COVID cases. But the question we have to examine is whether or not those positive COVID cases are being detrimental to the public health. And it's just tough to say right now. What's going on, guys? Today's video I was not looking forward to. We have to talk about COVID cases again. Uh, the, the Delta variant is out there. The Lambda variant is out there. And everything is rising. So we're going to take a look at data today. We're going to examine things, talk about how it's possible that maybe the state of New York, state of New Jersey starts to quarantine people who come back from Nevada. If we are just going to be this horrible redheaded stepchild of the entire nation, the number one tourist destination in America. Could you imagine if we were marked? It might be like that. I don't know. We're going to look at the cases look at the data. We're going to talk about how maybe this place is becoming like a giant coronavirus factory. Okay, so after filming this video, uploading it, doing everything, all the YouTube stuff, we got a recommendation from the Southern Nevada Health District that says, vaccinated or not, you all should be wearing masks inside at all times. Now, this is not a requirement just quite yet. So this means that if you do come here, you don't have to wear them in order to enter into a casino. They're not at that point, but I thought I would update it. This is the way YouTube happens sometimes. I put all the work in on the video and then I have to make an update, tear the old video down and put the new video up. It was on Patreon early. So if you saw this on Patreon, this is a different version of the video you're seeing. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. Stay tuned to the channel for updates. See me in a live stream tonight. I'll be out on the strip and I look forward to seeing you and putting my finger in the frame is very amateurish. There you go. Okay, here's your video. Action. We're going to base that on some stuff that happened in Europe of all places. And uh, yeah, uh, stick with me. This video will be a lot of data, a lot of stats, but it might help you decide if you're going to come out here. And um, I'm not here to tell you if you should come out here. I'm just here to give you the information and tell you about my train of thought. And you can tell me what you think. So my name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I'm a Vegas blogger. Hope you guys would like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for future notifications. I am quite aware that I speak quickly. Um, it's just the way I've been. It's just the way I am. I am what I am and that's all that I am. I'm Steven, the YouTube man. Uh, so if you guys want to uh, leave us a question of the day answer, does uh, this really change anything for you? If masks are reinstituted in Las Vegas, like they have been in California and LA County, does this change the way that you plan your vacations? Are you gonna like put your vacation plans on hold? I'd like to know that in the comments below if we went to a mask mandate necessary for indoor spaces. Um, you can also uh, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, visit us on Patreon, where you get extra content videos go early a lot of the time over there and uh, channel memberships get you a chat icon you get your name in the credits either way and uh, if you need a mask hmm yeah you know there's that thing we've been doing for the last um, you know 14 months vegasfacemask.com no s at the end my wife makes them if you got to have one on a plane or a train or work uh, you know what get a good one these ones here go around the back of your head not your ears they don't fall down your face there's no nose wire and I have lots of different colors this is just a solid color in case you got to work at a store and you can't have a pattern, but VegasFaceMask.com, no, us at the end. All right. Whew. We got to talk about this right now. So we're going to look at some stats right now. I'm going to tell you guys this right now. So this is going to be a tough video. First of all, let's talk about the possibility that people are going to be banned coming in or quarantined if they go back home. So why would that happen? Well, we'll get to that in a minute uh, in terms of the actual positive test uh, rate coming back. But during the whole COVID outbreak, the state of New York, New Jersey, and I think a couple of handful of other states were telling people coming from Nevada, if you come and you stay in Las Vegas, you go to Nevada, you come back, uh, you're going to have to quarantine because they have a more than 10% positivity uh, rate coming back for tests. Where are we right now? You will find out that in a moment. So there could be some things down the line where some states do this, or maybe they don't. We don't know. The whole world has changed since the November election. It's been very strange. Things that were once super important, possibly election issues or no longer election issues, and people seem to be opening up like never before. So I don't know if that's going to be the case. It's funny how that works. Um, the second thing is we might be creating a giant COVID factory here in Southern Nevada. So there was a, a concert that happened out in the Netherlands. 20,000 people went, 20,000 people went and they either had to show a negative test or that they were double vaccinated or fully vaccinated with a one shot. And uh, of 20,000 people, a thousand cases were generated. Even though everybody had to show those two things, you think the event would be safe, right? Maybe there was an event organizer that uh, slipped under the wire. Maybe there was somebody that worked at the show that uh, you know figured out how to get in without uh, showing a barcode or something like that on their phone. So think about Garth Brooks concert. 
Okay. And by the way, I'm also going to pick on Conor McGregor. It doesn't really matter. If 20,000 people generated 1,000 positive test results in the Netherlands, what did 60,000 people generate? Was that 3,000 positive tests that we don't know about? What about the extra 20,000 people of the T-Mobile? Is that an extra 1,000 cases? Let's just like let's just go to the extremes and take the numbers out to the extremes. If we had 100,000 people here, did we generate, you know, uh, what's 100,000 divided by 2 is 50? Uh, do we generate what, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5,000 cases of COVID. I'm not good at math, by the way. Did we generate 5,000 cases of COVID a weekend? I don't know. So that's a thing, you know, that's a real thing. And for the record, even if you're vaccinated, you can still get this thing. But anyways, we got to get to the stats before you guys bail on the video. So let's go to our stats right now. This is the nevadaindependent.com. If you're ever curious about these things, go to this website, click on coronavirus data in the top left hand corner. It'll take you to this page. This page will be updated later today and it'll actually show some stats down here for new cases and new deaths. But uh, this was updated this morning at 8 a.m. when I generated this page. We look at the overview of COVID-19 cases, active cases versus recoveries, and we look at the deaths, which is this dark blue line down here. Now, what's important to note is that Nevada, Clark County is the biggest county. We have the most amount of people, if there's what, three point something million people in a whole entire state, over two million of them live in this county. Clark County is a big county too, by the way. It's one of the biggest ones, I think, in America, like 14th biggest by, by, by land area volume. So we look at the COVID uh, vaccines administered. This is the first thing. Nevadans are not too hot on getting a COVID vaccine. That's just the way it's going to be, right? They're not too big on it. And uh, we have our doses distributed versus at least one dose given. And then we have not at all doses given, okay? Um, so not at all, 35%, fully vaccinated, 43%. Okay. By the way, I just realized I was looking at my wrong camera. For some reason, I have to be looking at this one. But I'm looking at the screen anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Man, that they're tech to board of that. They're uh, YouTubers, right? Anyways, um, vaccines. Okay, look, vaccinations. This is what we're looking at right here. And then we're also going to look at new vaccinations per day. This is interesting data for you guys. At least it is for me. Um, right here, about April 5th, 13th, this is where they told people don't get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It's going to cause blood clots. Hold off on that. They paused it. Look at that. Wow. Look at that disinterest in vaccinations afterwards. It's funny because your words have power and you have to choose your words. And so if you wanted to keep that whole thing successful, maybe you shouldn't have um, had the knee jerk, but they do the best they can. These public health officials, I assume. I'm not one. Who's to say, right? And I already have people in my chats going, you're not a doctor. Never said I was. I'm just looking at the data that you can look at, too, giving you my opinion on it. So here's our cases. We can see uh, new, new COVID-19 cases reported each day within a seven-day average trend line. And we can definitely see that the cases are going up, especially since June-ish. Now, we're not looking at anything after July 4th, but I think the July 4th to right now, it's been about almost two weeks. I think that's what's really causing it. I think the 4th of July might have been a big, huge uptick for us. And then we look at our week over week growth in cases. We can see our peak right here. We're we had 19,000 cases 40 weeks into the deal. So this would have been about the end of um, about the end of 2019. But here we are again with 4,700 down from a low of 1,400. This is our distribution by uh, age groups. Of course, we know that uh, people who are older are going to be hit harder with this thing. But what's interesting about these charts is that uh, the vast majority of the people getting this thing are, you know, between uh, 20 to 40 years old. So we have for 38 percent of all the cases are right here. And then we add another 16 percent to here. So most of it is this chunk of the pie chart, right? Kids, not so much, especially under 10. People who are over 70 staying indoors don't go out as much. And, you know, that's how it works. But active adults going to be more susceptible. This is what's the worst troubling thing to me. Hospitalizations, right? Hospitalizations are up considerably from a lower point earlier on in June. But we can look at the hospitalizations and people on ventilators are also up. And this is where we get to get to the argument. And it's a good argument. If COVID's not that serious, like some people want to put forth, and why is it that this is happening in terms of, you know, people in, in the ventilator in the ICU? So look at it. I mean, it's it's very it's getting higher. And if this wasn't a thing that really affected people, then they wouldn't be in the hospital. And you got to remember back way last year when it was like, you know, 15 days to stop the spread. But 
take a look here uh, into the very start of this year we had our highest amount of ventilator people and icu cases in the entire time of the pandemic uh, dropping it and going up precipitously i don't know why this number looks like this and versus this and if you have any theories tell me in the comment below versus all the way down here where we're going up again deaths uh, up on the uptick but deaths back here we're here but here's the thing about the deaths in the state of Nevada, from as far as I understand it, if you had COVID and you got a diagnosis on the first, and then you stayed at home for two weeks and recovered, and then on the 14th, you had a test that said you no longer have COVID, and then on the 25th of the same month, you got hit by a car and were killed, as far as I understand, because you had a COVID diagnosis in the last 30 days, they are counting that as a COVID death. So these numbers, I don't know if you can trust them as much. I would hope that you could, but possibly not. And when it comes to demographics of COVID-19 deaths, we know, yes, older folks are more susceptible, younger folks not as much, and then, you know, very little in this age range and even considerably less in this group. And forget about it on this group right here. They don't even show the little ones under 10. They're not even represented on this chart. But here's where we get down to where this is it right here. COVID tests coming back positive. So the WHO has this threshold where they say that it's going to be 5%, which is 5% uh, positive test coming back. So if you had, you know, 100 tests, if uh, 95 of them came back as negative and 5% of them came back as positive, congratulations, you guys are doing something right. But right now at this point, it's actually 10.45%. It's shot up a lot from 3.51 all the way up to 10.87, actually. And uh, that is bad. That means that states like New York, like I mentioned before, New Jersey could put in things. I don't know if they're going to do that, but they could say, well, you flew to Nevada, you have to quarantine when you come home. Other countries can do the same thing. Anybody can do this. Um, whether or not it's enforceable is a whole other thing altogether for a whole different type of channel. And this is where it comes down to why do we have such a high percentage of people coming back as positive? Are they positive asymptomatic? Probably not because the new testing procedures that they instituted in early January said that if you had an asymptomatic positive test, it wouldn't be counted unless you got a second test to reconfirm the first. Before that, when we had all of our super ridiculous positive test rates coming back uh, for COVID cases, we were just taking one test, even if it was an asymptomatic test, that would be right about uh, December of last year. And we were just taking that and we were running with that. Now you need a double test to have an asymptomatic person come back as positive. So it's um it's definitely crazy when you look at the numbers to see that this thing is just never going away one last thing i'll leave you with and if you've made it this far uh say yes in the chat i made it this far this is the interesting chart R there's a rural counties everybody is getting a slight uptick when i looked at this a few days ago it wasn't as much but look at clark this is clark county where nevada sits look at our caseloads coming back 700 a day now versus washout now this the chart spikes Carson, not so many. This is where Carson City, or this is our government uh, headquarters. So you got to assume everybody's vaccinated up there because they're government workers, um, you know. But they do spike in most places. Some of them are down, like Douglas County, Elko County, going downwards. Look at Clark County. The one part of Nevada where people come and they play and they stay, and the one giant economic driver of our entire economy. It's a scary thing out there. Now, look, here's the deal: if you have, you know a lifestyle where you go back to a susceptible person. If you have all these problems in your life, maybe you have an immuno immunodeficiency. There's people with lupus and, and rheumatoid arthritis and they're on immunosuppressants because those are, those are diseases which attack your body. You might consider this data and you might think about it. Now, if you've had a vaccine, you might not worry about any of this stuff. If you're willing to wear a mask when you go out, you might not be willing to worry about all this stuff. But I just thought it would be responsible for me to make a video about this and show you guys what's actually happening and terms of all of this because if we don't know the data we don't know the stats we can't make good decisions for ourselves when we decide to do something you wouldn't go in to try to buy a big investment like a car something that you're going to own for five years and pay you know uh, fifty thousand or forty thousand dollars you wouldn't do that without going and researching the car or finding some information out or asking an expert so i thought i would do this for you guys i'm curious to know like i mentioned would you stop your trip if they started requiring masks in Nevada again. 
because it could happen. It very well could. And usually what happens in Los Angeles doesn't stay in Los Angeles. It kind of goes over to Las Vegas. So we'll keep you updated here on the channel. Be sure to tune into my live stream tonight. I'll be on the strip. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for the future notifications. And that's my video and I'm sticking to it. If you do need a face mask, you can head on over to VegasFaceMask.com. No at the end. And if you guys like the channel enough, leave us a comment below and share this video with somebody. I appreciate you guys watching, sharing, liking. Now's the time of the video where I say three, two, one, click. Are you ready? Three, two, one, and click.